Hey beer and brew fans and welcome to Something About Beer. Today we're in the brewery. We're making a Kolsch today with these bad boys. These are fresh uh, Halatau hops from my neighbor's garden. They very kindly said I can pick as many as I wanted. Um, they've been off the bind now for about 16 hours so should still be uh, full of, uh, of lovely uh, hoppy goodness. Uh, and of course, when the beer is ready, I will be sending a few bottles around to my neighbor uh, as a thank you for, for letting me have the uh, hops. So let's get cracking. Quite a standard Kolsch recipe we have here. Uh, the only thing I did change is the hops. Um, in the recipe itself, I used dried whole cone halatau uh, just to get the ratio right between uh, um, bittering um, and and uh, aroma, flavour, etc., um, and IBUs, of course. Uh, but in practice, I used five times more weight because I was using wet hops. So here we are with the uh, mash rest, uh, I'm recirculating the wort, um, we're about at 63 degrees uh, at the moment, the target is around 65, uh, so we're more or less uh, there. I have found on this rig that actually that the recirculation does really help with clarity um, and also efficiency. Target pH was around 5.35 and it's settling around 5.3. 5.31, 5.32, something like that. So pretty happy with that. We have the lovely fresh Halatau hops. The recipe called for 100 grams of dried whole cone. Um, I wanted to use five times more wet cone hops and uh, I actually picked 505 grams. Um, a quick check-in um, regarding the Kolsch uh, brew date. I'm a little bit suspicious because uh, I'm about two and a half hours in and everything seems to be going according to plan. Um, yeah, I've had no uh, issues, um, numbers looking good. Um, yeah, I haven't had a brew day go this smooth in quite some time and I've probably gone and jinxed it now, uh, having said that. Uh, but no, I'm, uh, I'm sat here having a cup of tea um, I've, uh, I've stringed some onions for drying, I've, I've picked some tomatoes, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little, uh, a little suspicious. So uh, I'm just kind of waiting for either the brewery to fall down or, I don't know, something to happen. Um, or knowing me, I'll forget to put the yeast in. Um, I'm just going to go put a note on my uh, fermenter not to forget to put the yeast in, I think. Due to the amount of hops that are going in, I decided to use two hop spiders. Uh, the Magnum's going in now for, for bittering. Uh, not sure this is gonna work though, so I may have to rethink this and review it. Um, anyway, let's see how it goes. I uh, needed to improvise a little bit with the uh, amount of hops that are going in uh, with the bag because the hop spiders simply weren't big enough. Um, but uh, hopefully this will, will be okay. So. Here is the 10 minute uh, addition going in. Got a little stir in, just got to watch this boil over. Make sure that doesn't get out of hand. 
Getting close. Ooh. Uh, need to keep an eye on that. I'll drop. I think I'll drop the temperature a little bit. So uh, so it's not on 100% um, power. So that might just uh, solve that risk of boil over here. Smelling really good though, I've got to say. I've averted the risk of a boil over, I think, by reducing the uh, power um, a little bit. The other thing with this, uh, there's a screen on the bottom of uh, my uh, kettle here um, that protects anything from touching the elements on the bottom. Plus this bag doesn't go all the way to the bottom anyway, it's a smaller bag uh, that I chose. Um, so uh, there's no risk of burning on the elements or anything like that. Okay, we're down to, well, 80 or just uh, just below 80. So in with, in with the rest of the hops. 350 grams this is of wet, which is about five times what was required um, from dry. They recommend anywhere between four and six, so I went in the middle. All right, we'll get those stirred in and leave them for 10 minutes. This is a, a lot of <laughs> a lot of wet hops in here. Um, all in all, there's 500 grams of uh, wet wet hops. Which, uh, as I say, is five times more than uh, the dry equivalent. Um, I did put a little bit more liquid um, in, so I extended or increased the amount of water that I put in to help with the uh, soakage, because obviously there's going to be a lot of uh, wort soaked up by these wet hops. Um, so I hope, hope my uh, volume is going to be going to be okay but time will uh, time will tell it is smelling really good though i've got to say so there we go i'm going to leave that now for for 10 minutes and then we'll start to cool and uh, transfer all right we're uh, chilling the work now um i'm uh, recirculating as well i'm going to keep that recirculating i find that doing that calls uh, enables the, the work to cool quicker um, because you're, you're circulating it uh, through the uh, all over the, uh, um, the uh, chiller. So um, yeah, we'll wait until that gets down to pitching temperature, and then we'll transfer it into the fermenter. So here we are with the transfer. Just going to listen to the fermenter here using the pump from the. Uh, wheeled it over on my, uh, on my homemade dolly. It's dead easy. Just got to watch that kink a little bit in that uh, in that pipe. I do actually have an extension uh, for that. Um, I just haven't put it on. I should probably do that. Make it a little bit easier. Although usually I'm not doing this only one-handed. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, but uh, but no, it's uh, it's going into the fermenter pretty good. Uh, a lot of splashing around, some nice oxygen in there for the yeast. There we are, all put away in the fermentation chamber. The yeast is pitched. We've got uh, a full keg of star sand there. We've got the uh, gas line coming from the fermenter into the gas post. Then we have a uh, beer line coming from the uh, beer post into, into the bucket. And when fermentation kicks off, that will basically push the star sand um, out. Uh, and then we'll have a oxygen free keg in which to transfer the, uh, the finished beer. Doing the final stats, uh, they all look good. I was pretty much bang on with, uh, with most of my uh, numbers. So very happy with that. Um, what I'm more happy about is actually the efficiency that I achieve, both from a brew house and a mash efficiency perspective. Um, a quick roundup of the, of the day today, brew day. Um, everything went, uh, went very well. Um, not a single thing went wrong and I hit all my numbers within a couple of uh, uh, points. Um, 
But honestly, I'm still waiting for, for something to go wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a very, very good brew day. Um, I guess the uh, beer and brewing gods were smiling on me uh, today. Um, but I've uh, enjoyed it. It's gone uh, really well. It's the first green hop uh, beer that I've made for a couple of years, um, actually. So I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to trying that. Uh, and of course, I will be posting a, uh, uh, a video um, when, uh, when the beer is ready um, as, a, as, a, as a tasting and a, um, a feedback video on, on that beer. Um, so if you uh, enjoy what we're doing and you like uh, the content that we're putting out, uh, then please uh, subscribe. That really helps our channel out uh, quite a lot. Um, and don't forget to ring the bell so that uh, you get notified of any new content that we, uh, that we put out. So uh, thanks again for joining and uh, until next time, cheers. If you like what we're doing here at Something About Beer, please subscribe. It does help the channel out a lot. And don't forget to ring that bell so you can be alerted to new content that we're putting out.